Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, brothers and sisters, to the After Maghrib podcast. We are now in the month of Muharram. This is a month which is, of course, life changing for many of us. We use this month to connect not just with the story of Abu Abdullah al Hussein, but also the lessons, the legacy that we learn from his life. So, over the coming weeks, inshallah, you will be seeing more content from After Maghrib, which is specifically related to the Muharram season. And of course, finding ways for us as a community to discuss the issues that matter to us and of course, to find solutions for problems that we face. All of course, within the best of our ability and of course, inshallah, with the purest of intentions. Welcome to the After Maghrib podcast brought to you by Ahlul Bayt TV. Assalamu alaikum, Sayyid Ali. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah. How are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm good. I'm good. The season of Abu Abdullah al Hussein is upon us. It is, it is indeed. And inshallah, we will try to do our very best to give justice to Imam al Hussein during the upcoming podcast, including today's. And should we tell the viewers what we wish to discuss today? Yeah, I think, well, before we do that, mm. I, of course, uh, before we go any further, a huge thanks to everyone at home um, for engaging with the podcast. We've released a few episodes now and alhamdulillah, the feedback has been uh, very, very interesting, I think, for us, both in public and in private. And I want to thank everyone, no matter what sort of listener you are, if you're involved in the community, if you're not, if you if you have a status or a sort of position in the community, or even if you don't, your feedback is equally as valuable to us and you know I just want to thank you and if you're enjoying the content please subscribe to the After Maghrib channel uh, we want to hit a thousand uh, subscribers by the end of the year inshallah so that is our goal but we need you to help us get there today mm. Sayyid Ali we're talking about Abu Abdullah al Hussein and specifically we're talking about the way we commemorate them the way we uh, learn from him and also perhaps talking about those of us and many of us fall into this category of those people who find spirituality during the season, but maybe flicker in our spirituality outside. Mm -hmm. Ahmed, you know, we are in the sorrowful month of Muharram and it's a time where everyone has their own personal connection with this month. You know, some people uh, just want to mourn. Some people want to become better Muslims. Some people want to do both. And then, you know, there are other people who just turn on during these 10 nights. Mm. So, I, I, you know, you mentioned everyone has their own way you know, it's like a seasonal yeah. where, uh, you know, some people get attached to the month of Ramadan or the more, more importantly for Shia, they have this sort of bigger attachment when it comes to the month of Muharram. And I believe it's because they, they know what Imam Hussein means to them and they have this connection. Now, I'm not saying they don't have that connection directly through Allah, but it's through Abba Abdullah and Ahlul Bayt that we connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I've seen this like sort of rise in, uh, I don't know if it's the right term to use, but I'm going to call them part-time Muslims, mm. if it's fair. I hope I don't offend anyone listening to this. But there is this sort of rise where people only connect with Abba Abdullah, the message of Imam Hussein, the message of Karbala during these 10 nights. I don't think it's it's incorrect also to say that, I knew, speaking for myself, mm. many of us feel it fall into that category ourselves, as, as you said, part-time Muslims. Because it's natural when you're congregationally Morning about Abdullah al Hussein, Salawat Allah wa Salam mm -hmm. We many of the time we will we we will more easily connect because we know in in Islam when we mourn together, when we pray together, when we do dhikr together, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala gives us more blessings and opens our heart up even more. So of course when we are talking about Imam al Hussein and when we sit together in majalis, mm -hmm. when we do latam or matam together, that. In a, in a, in a, for many of us Opens our heart up And it's not In my opinion It's not a bad thing If anything To us It should be A, a, a beacon of hope Like a, 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 yeah. a kind of Flickering candle In your heart mm. Which says That there is hope Inside you There is Some softness In your heart mm -hmm. Which is leaning Pulling you towards Abba Abdullah It's just There for us To take it to the next level And, and escalate that That small candle And turn it into a fire of love For the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for ultimately for Allah only. Of course, of course. And 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 in no way am I saying, for example, I am or you are or yeah. anyone's better than anyone. But it's, 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 it's something that I've always thought about because, you know, 
Imam al Hussein was more than just these 10 nights. And Imam al Hussein is someone who is bigger than just Aza or everything. You know, because we know, for example, like even during the Battle of Karbala, he stopped to, mm. to pray Salah. Yeah, and there's all these things. And uh, when I say about part time Muslims, let me just make it clear I am not a full time Muslim. We try to be. We try to be. We yeah, try our to goal be. is there, inshallah. That's, I love the fact how Imam al Hussein brings them back to that path. Brings them back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I don't know if it's, for example, the community's fault. I don't know if it's, uh, you know, the majalis is what's attracting them or taking them away from the centers. That's just to see them attend the 10 nights. Just to see them, you know, dressing in the black, mourning about Abdullah and Hussein. It's something amazing. Just to see Imam Hussein, how he brings everyone. No matter how far you've gone, yeah. you know, how much, you know, some people lose their way in life. But Imam Hussein brings them back and back year after year. The message of Imam Hussein is infectious, mm. in my opinion. Mm. I think that there's so many things for us to take away with. And even if you at home are not fully connecting with the Majalis, you don't fully get it. Like, yeah, you go, your goal is there. It's okay. If you're, if you're unable to shed a tear for Imam Hussein at this stage, it's okay. Don't worry about it. You see people posting poetry. You see people reciting Latmiyat. You see people sharing videos, tweeting Ya Hussein, all mm. sorts of different things. And you feel, where do I fit into this community? Wallah, it's absolutely fine. As long as your goal, your niya is there to get to the stage where Abba Abdullah is a cru critical and crucial part of your life. Because we know him as Safina to Najah, the Ark of Salvation. Mm. Imam Hussein will take us from where we are to where we need to get to. You know, the, the, the Imam Hussein is our salvation in, in dunya and in akhira, inshallah. So, you know, that's it's a big reason why I think many of us fall in love with with oh, these so with this you, season. You just, I think, uh, you know, hit, hit the nail, the hammer, fall in love. And Hussein is literally the meaning of love. Mm. You know, that I once, I once uh, wrote some po poetry. I was like, every love has an ending, except for the love of Hussein. Aye. And and I think it's that love. That brings everyone towards, you know, uh, the majalis, towards the azar, towards the service. And, you know, what's so beautiful about serving Imam al-Hussein is that no one loves to be called a servant. But mm -hmm. everyone dies to be called a servant of Imam al-Hussein. And uh, it's, again, even those people who are not really connected with the faith, those people who, who are not really, you know, doing the wajibat all the time, it is because of Imam al-Hussein they are coming back. And they are doing the wajibat. And, and in fact, they're doing even more. They're, they are doing the mustahabat. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's just to think how Imam Hussein has like changed the world. Hmm. It's crazy. It's crazy. You know, there are so many people who look at us and they say, you Shia, mm. why do you care so much about Hussein ibn Ali? Why do you come every single year? All you do is talk about Imam Hussein. You want to know why we talk about Hussein ibn Ali so much? It's because we learn from him. Mm. It's because we remember that Abba Abdullah al Hussein has a legacy. And those who understand Imam al Hussein's legacy understand that if you see something in the story of Imam, you can apply it to your life. If you see famine and thirst in the world around you, you remember Al Abbas. Mm. And you remember how he went out of his way, he lost his limbs and his life mm. to quench the thirst of the women folk in his camp. When you see bullying in school, your children are suffering in school, you remember Al Qasim, how as a young man he stood in the face of oppression mm. and he stood tall regardless of, of any aggression or violence that he was faced with. And when you see domestic abuse, when you see violence with disparities amongst genders, you remember. Zainab alayha. Alayha. And we remember how she stood tall in the court And she addressed the people like a lioness mm. The daughter of Ali ibn Abi Talib mm. And we remember that not just the rights of women But we acknowledge the power a woman can hold in today's day and age These lessons are not there for us to just come and, and commemorate on, on a seasonal basis But for us to take and to implement At least in my humble opinion in, Into the rest of the year and into wider society Indeed but Said, of course, many of us, we're talking about this concept of part-time Muslims. But many of us struggle to mm. find that connection between the 10 nights of Muharram and, of course, Arba'in and wider society. I go to my job and in the evening I'm going to Majalis. Yeah. How do I bridge that gap between what I'm hearing and what I'm seeing outside of the Majalis? You know, it's, it's, it's a beautiful question you ask because I, I think it's something I can relate to myself personally. It's... Um, 
you know, especially like during the month of Muharram, it's life becomes more than just the ten nights majalis. So you sort of live every moment of the sorrowful nights all the way until the day of Arba'in, till after Safar. Yeah. Uh, and um, you sort of continue. So, it's, it's, you know, I spoke about uh, uh, p- p- people being part time. Uh, but even those part time has become full timers when mm-hmm. it comes during these ten nights. So, for example, you know, we can start our day off listening to Ziyarat Ashura. And, you know, this opens the heart. You know, uh, as much as sad to listen and uh, understand the words that's being said in the ziyarah, it really opens the heart. And uh, once you hear the ziyarah from the morning, you've sort of set tone of how the evening, so you've like sort of prepared yourself to go towards the majalis. Mm-hmm. And throughout the majlis and the morning of ziyarat Ashura, you go to your day, day-to-day work, you dress dressed in black, you know, you're still feeling that morning... Uh, you know, emotion and you, your thoughts are still about, you know, what you heard in the majalis the day before. And uh, um, so it's more than just uh, lessons during the majalis itself. So you can even, you bring the example of drinking water, remembering the atash. And it's something so beautiful that even outside of the, the, the 10 nights of Muharram or even outside the, the month of the Muharram and Safar, whenever you drink water, yeah. Automatically, you think, yeah, Hussein. Yeah, Hussein. And uh, I just remembered a beautiful organization called Who is Hussein? Mm. Drink water, think Hussein. And uh, it's, 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 it's an amazing message. It's an amazing message. It is. It's interesting as well. Um, especially when we talk about the concept of, of using, I know you mentioned reciting Ziyata Ashura mm. at the beginning of the day. I think something like that, small thing like that, can make a difference to long term change. Because, in my opinion, the month of Muharram as a trigger or maybe as a catalyst should be used to find small changes you can make in your life. What is about mm. Abdullah if he's not sacrificed? Mm. What's his message if it's not giving? You know, you give something which you wouldn't usually give or you take away something which you loved. Yeah, you know. I think during these nights your heart becomes softer. Yeah. And you are less, you know, it's, it's less about, you know, uh, shall I say, Enjoying the day It's more about You know accompli- Accomplishing What the task is Getting it done Whilst not being too energetic about it Because mm. you know Your heart softens So everything changes around you What you do at home uh, How you speak with people Even how you Look at yourself So no- normally You always like Try to always smile Be energetic Best That softness But say this In my opinion mm. I think it goes one step further Because of course These are the things That we'll do Whether or whether or not We Fully connect with Abba Abdullah. Do you get me? So we'll wear black and we'll feel sad and so on and so forth, as we should. Yeah, hundred percent. But there are small things I think we should we should take into account every year, and small things we can sacrifice. Okay, I, I've, poss- I've possibly like misunderstood the conversation here a little. Uh, me, no, give I don't me, think give me you one have. example. Give me one. Okay, example. so yeah. so as an example, let's say something small in your life mm. you want to get rid of. Something which is not too, let's aim for something in your life you want to get rid of. It doesn't have to be too magnanimous to the point where you think, oh, this is a mammoth task. I can't do it. Yeah. But it doesn't have to be so easy to the point you think this is really easy for me to stop doing or to start doing. As an example, if you're listening to music okay, and you stop listening to music during Muharram every year, but you restart after Muharram as many people do. Mm. F- let's go that one step further. If you're watching something you shouldn't be watching. Doing something you shouldn't be doing. That goes for men and for women. Use this chance, this opportune moment to take into account the sacrifice that you'd make in previous years or even not. But apply what you learn and what you cry for and what you mourn for in the night. Apply that to the day. Mm. Do things that you wouldn't usually do. Stop doing things that you would usually do. Do you see what I mean? Uh, I, I think I think those are the things which, which are critical for us to do in these days. No, no, I, I sort of understand uh, your point now. And you mentioned something. You mentioned music, and music is a huge, huge problem. And, yeah. Um, I respect the fact that people actually turn it off completely, uh, at least for the first ten nights of Muharram. It's completely turned off, and it's something you know I, I have high respect for. Uh, but it's a shame that people continue back to the music just as soon as Ashura is off. And uh, I really hope people can change. Mm-hmm. And learn that, you know, Muharram and Imam Hussein and the Message of Allah is not just ten days, and it's not just thirty days in Ramadan, for example. It's it's your day to day life. 
نو بينغ ا مسلم يا ام بتاكل بينغ ا شيا مسلم يو اولويز هاف تو بي وان ستيب اهيد دو وان ستيب مور ذان ايفري ون ايلس ان اول اونستلي بيكوز وي هاف ذا بيست اوف اكزامبلز اند وي كان اولويز ريليت تو ذا بيست فروم ذا ام فروم ذا اهل البيت عليهم السلام اند يو نو ذي سبيك سو هيفلي اجينست ميوزك فور اكزامبل بس انفورتشنلي بيبل ستيل ليسن تو ات افتر ذا نايتس بس ذاتس وان ثينغ اي ثينك ذا يوث Or this, uh, sorry to use the phrase again. The, the, the part timers they just turn off during the ten nights. Yeah, but it's not just music. There's other things. It is. They yeah. stop talking to the other gender. You know, they stop going out. For example, to 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 have fun with the boys or the girls with the females. It's it's um, let's try do more. Let's yeah, do more. I mean, you mentioned music. Mm. Um, personally speaking, I I can relate to this. I used to struggle <coughs> with music a lot, mm. a lot growing up. Music is an addiction, and if you've not faced it, I cannot imagine it, you struggling with music. No, <laughs> <laughs> music, honestly speaking, is mm. addictive. It's a drug, and many people are. We have to understand because we don't want to sit here looking like people who are, are like you know what what do, what do we call it? Like um, I can't remember the word, but people who like looking down. We don't want to be condescending in the way we approach of course, this of course. because we have to understand that many people involuntarily listen to music. You're born into a culture. You don't live, for example, in a Muslim area. Some people do, but even then, we go to schools. We're surrounded by it. We go shopping. We're surrounded by it. We turn on the radio in the car. We're surrounded by it. YouTube adverts. Everywhere you go, mm. you're faced with music. Correct. When I was about fifteen, no, when I was maybe sixteen or seventeen, I was one of those part timers when it came to music specifically. Every Muharram from a young age, my parents and credit to them, they Alhamdulillah, may Allah bless them and lengthen their lives, always would tell me. This is what you should be doing, and don't just stop in Muharram. Stop for good. Uh, you know, in those days, it was really easy, I think, to to get around listening to music and being caught. Mm. But um, I must have been when I was about seventeen. I heard a lecture in uh, my local centre, and it was on the night of Ashura, the night of the tenth, and it was a youth seminar. And this just goes to show why youth seminars are so important outside of the majlis itself. And someone asked a question about how can I take something away from this night, Ashura night, and apply it to my life. And the 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 the, the sheikh said something very applicable. He said, "Find something small, which you know you shouldn't do, something that you want to stop doing. Just make that near tonight. Ab- mm-hmm. Abdullah will be there. He'll help you. He's the witness to your oath. Do you see what I mean?" I went home. I deleted all the songs off my phone one by one. It took me a few hours. <laughs> But I remember that day, and it was for me. It was like a, it was a revelation. I'm not gonna lie. I had a relapse here or there, mm. but that was you know for a short period. And, and once you make that first step, it becomes so much easier. And it's not just music; it's other addictions. We talk about drug addictions all the time. We talk about you know uh, a substance abuse. But outside of that, addictions in today's day and age, like social media, talking to the opposite gender. We always talk on this podcast how easy it is to talk to girls on social media yeah. for girls to talk to boys. It's an addiction. Mm. Find a way to stop it. Say Bismillah and take it day by day. But I want to ask you, said if you were in that position, and I don't know if you have been, but for those who stop listening to music, but people who are m- like like melodies, you know, you can relate to that. What can you recommend? Yeah, I mean, me personally, and I'm being very honest here, I have never had the Alhamdulillah. Yeah, I've never been in that uh, situation mm-hmm. where uh, like music is always playing in the ears or something. For me, it's like you know you go into Asda or Tesco and it's there in the background, or you know <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, you're hearing it on the when I was a kid TV on the cartoons. Yeah, yeah, that was like my exposure. And then you know friends at school, uh, they used to play in the background. So for me, it was all just um, it was the it was surroundings. outside noise. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't me directly. Um, but for someone who is struggling with music. There is alternative. Okay. Uh, firstly, Quran al Karim. Mm. That's uh, before I get into anything else. Th- that is the uh, is is. Yani just hearing the words and if it's recited by someone with the most amazing melody, uh, it takes you to the heavens. Mm-hmm. Honestly, it's ten times, ta- hundred times, a thousand times better than music oh, sure. itself. And but more importantly, if we're dis- discussing music around the month of Muharram, you can listen to ziyara. You can listen to lectures. Mm-hmm. You can listen to nohas, latmiyas, eulogies, and you know, mashallah. Uh, very recently, over the last few years, 
you know, uh, the voice of Shia uh, eulogists have, has upgraded. Yeah. So, you know, you've got this like studio recording going on. You've got people using Western style uh, melodies. So there are alternatives and mm -hmm. these are the halal alternatives. And it satisfies yeah. that craving. I think it does. I think it does uh, as well. The fact that you can hear these even outside of uh, the month of Ramadan or the month of Muharram. Do you know, I think that's a really good point because specifically speaking, um, and I know we're going to come to the t discussion of, of, of uh, Azhar Dari in, mm. in future conversations, but um, I believe, and I may be wrong, but I believe there's a hadith where there's uh, Imam al-Baqir gathers around 100 to 120 eulogists with the most beautiful voices. Mm. And he says to them, disperse into the lands and tell the people the story of my grandfather mm. using your voices because that will connect to people. Mm. Me personally... It was uh, Dua Yastashir, which is a beautiful Dua. I'll be honest, I didn't know of this Dua before. Um, before that, when I, when I stopped listening to music, it was my mum who introduced me to it. And um, she, it was a bit of a weird backstory, but she had a dream of my marhuma auntie reciting it, my dad's sister. And she came and she told me, she said, we're going to listen to this every day. I want you to learn it. So I learned it. Well, and I had that craving for something melodic do you see what i mean may allah bless us all that's beautiful yeah i mean and it's it's those things that pick up you start picking up a lot of information you learn about other cultures other languages other ways of mourning other ways of mm. grieving poetry there's so many beautiful insights which you can pick up but i think obviously music is one angle one element but it's as a story or as a concept the the sacrifice that you make is applicable to so many other things mm, mm. i mean music it's one of many yeah you know, you've got music, you've got uh, interacting with the opposite. I think that's the most biggest one, to be honest, mm -hmm. because of the age we live in, especially mm -hmm. on social media and this new world we came up with, digital hijab. Yeah. It is so easy. Like, I think even during the, mo the, the month of Muharram, people are still uh, speaking with the opposite gender. Um, and the excuse of, you know, we're discussing, I don't know, Karbala, we're discussing uh, Majalis or whatnot. But even that... I'm, I'm not, yeah, we aim to get rid of it completely. But if you can't, at least take it 10 steps lower. You know, if, 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 if just because you were discussing or relating to the month of Muharram doesn't mean you can continue talking with the opposite gender, for example. So you've got the music issue, you've got the opposite gender issue, you've got. Uh, and I think another thing that's really, really sad. Yeah. It's that um, a lot of the time after the majlis is over, we have people going out and laughing. Yeah. So I'm not saying they're going out to have fun, but it's as if they just, you know, they stepped outside the, the majlis. They go back to smiling, laughing, joking. And I think that's something that also should be avoided because if that's something you avoid, it will change yeah. you. It's very easy to turn a majlis, or turn a majlis into a social affair. Mm. And, you know, mm. oh, I haven't seen these guys reunion and you're having fun. And even, it, to be fair, it goes with all age groups. Yeah, I, the, like I remember they, when I was a kid, yeah. they used to say, for example, don't joke, don't laugh, don't smile. Of course. I know I smile quite a bit. It's a, <laughs> it's, it's a bit of my nature. Yeah, nah, it's, it's, uh, it's not, not a bad thing, Said. Um, but they even went as far as telling me, you know, don't chew gum during, uh, for example, the month of Muharram. You know, because it's seen as something as disrespectful. Mm. So anything that we can see might, might be a disrespect to Imam Hussein alayhi salam, it's, your brain is telling you something. You are disrespecting. I think, I think we, have to, we have to think of it from an angle of Imam Hussein alayhi salam means to us more than our own parents mm. you know be a be and uh do you know what i mean yeah. Yeah. and when we say this we are actually <laughs> committing to imam al Hussein, our parents <clears throat> and not just our parents but our whole being ourselves mm. and god forbid you know if something happened to one of our close family members we would naturally be sorrowful yeah. we wouldn't be disrespectful we wouldn't go to see films we wouldn't go to um, a majlis and start joking around. So we need to change the way we perceive Imam Hussein. And we said at the beginning, for those who don't even have that emotional connection, it's fine. Make the near. You know when we say about crying in the majlis? Even the span of the, f the wing of a fly, if a tear comes out of your eye, uh, Fatima Tazahara yeah, will, will be there for you. And just to add to that, they actually even say that if you can't shed tears, yeah. you can actually just bow your head down. Lower your head, yeah. That's sufficient enough. You get the same reward. But Said, let me ask you, 
if someone at home is listening to this right now and and has this in their heart and they think I really want to connect this Muharram, I even outside of the ten days, but I struggle. I, I just it doesn't click with me. Like it does. I'm falling out of love, or but I know I shouldn't be. What would you have to say to them? Yeah, I. I can you give me an example? If of, someone's listening to this, and they think they go to the majlis every time. Mm -hmm. They look around. They see two, three, four hundred people crying, and they're just thinking, "Where do I fit in?" Because there are okay. people like that. Mm -hmm. There are people who think I don't feel like I'm fully a part of this. Outside of this majlis, I have my own identity. I have my own life. But I know there's in my heart. I'm here. I want to make benefit of it. I want to change the way I look at it. What would you have to say to that? I, I think number one, they're not alone. There are many who fall into that category. Even sometimes myself. Yeah. Like, uh, sometimes I can go to majlis. One day I can be like seriously, heavily, emotionally like into it, uh, upside down. And then, for example, you'll have one night where you you're not really shedding tears, and you look around and you say, you know, what have I done wrong? Sometimes I think like if there's no tears coming out. Sometimes I'm like, have I done something wrong? Has something like affected? You know, because I've always heard, like, for example, like, if you do something uh, that's not accepted by the Ahlul Bayt, it's very rare that you'll actually shed tears for them. So sometimes I have that thought. So never, no one's alone when it comes to this. But I believe if they can understand fully why we are mourning, they will have that connection. Because a lot of people, and I, I think myself back in the day, all I knew was, for example, you know, thankfully, I, I was raised in the household that I am in and I'm grateful to my father and everything. But there were some points where I'm like, things don't make sense. Or, for example, uh, shisma. I use the Iraqi term there. Shisma, mm. I mean... Uh, what do you call it? What do you call it in English? Yeah, and for example, why did this happen? Or, for example, did Imam Hussein know he was going to die? Like, all these questions. If you course, actually fully natural. understand... Yeah everything that uh, happened at Karbala and everything before Karbala happened and after Karbala happened, you will have that connection. Uh, because a lot of times that I feel like people who don't have that connection with the, the, the nice of Muharram or the message of Imam Hussein, they don't really know what happened at Karbala. Mm -hmm. All they know, they grew up is Imam Hussein died. He was killed by someone called Yazid. And uh, Zainab uh, went, went along to become captain. So they don't know everything. And mm -hmm. it, all they know is those small, small things. But honestly speaking, Sayyid, sorry to interrupt mm. you. I was going to say, like, I think, I think it's okay for, for that. Like, I don't mean it's okay to not know everything. Of course, if we have the opportunity, we need to know as much detail as we can. But there are so many disputed elements. But the main thing is, is that um, we live in a world now, 21st century society, now more than ever, does our generation within our community and the wider outside society need to know about Imam Hussein. They do. And we don't have any, we don't have excuses, by the way. The fact that you say we live in the 21st century, yeah. we have every resource available to us. Yes. Be it the internet. Exactly. Be it YouTube, be it Apple Podcasts. I'm sure, Absolutely. I'm very sure there are lectures and there are sermons and there are everything that has to do with Karbala but my, available online. My point specifically in regards to this is you made a really nice point uh, statement when you said we need to understand why we are mourning mm. because Imam Hussein when he said he's not just talking to the people around him on that day 10th of Muharram all those years ago he's talking to us today because we see greed and capitalism in society yeah. Yeah. do we not think that people who are struggling with poverty would be in need of Imam Hussein for hope we see for example war and famine destruction left right and center do we not think that people who are war torn refugees asylum seekers can benefit from the message of Imam Hussein even for us our day to day lives alhamdulillah we're settled mm. and we're comfortable and, and all of Allah's blessings to us even in our lives when we see some form of oppression we see some form of injustice we learn from Abu Abdullah that stand up don't take it Stand up and, and, and speak up. And these are the lessons which I think the wider world needs to know. It's all well and good talking about Mahatma Gandhi and Mother Teresa and so on. But Imam al Hussein, we truly believe, will give us that and more. Do you see what I mean? Mm. So I think when we understand that Imam al Hussein and, and the concept of mourning goes beyond what our community and what our families have taught us, and Imam al Hussein's message is ultimately universal, which I know is a, a cliche term. But his universal message is such that even the, the, the most kind of the skeleton details of his story should and, sh and will inspire the wider world. But it's our responsibility to get it out there. It, it is our responsibility. And you said something 
uh, by the way, so amazing. And it, it, it really makes sense yani, for people to go out and search and research and try to understand what happened yeah. at Karbala. Because at the end of the day, what happened at Karbala was a tragedy. Of course. But what was the reason for Imam Hussein to come out? Mm. Uh, like People don't know why he came out. All they know is someone killed the grandson of Rasulullah. And like I said, by Yazid. And, uh, but it was more than that. He actually came to restore the faith of Allah and bring back the teachings of his grandfather Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and uh, he sacrificed himself and his family in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so had it not been for that sacrifice had it not been for you know Imam Hussein where even when Tafl uh, al was gone mm. and he said Rabbi khud hatta tarda mm. God take all you want until you are satisfied like he gave everything his family himself he even knew his women are going to go captive like he gave everything for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so had it not been for Imam al-Jamila say the Zainab says Ma'arayta al-Jamila had Imam al-Hussein not done this there will be no Islam realistically there will be no Islam yeah absolutely so we are grateful and thankful and this is one of the reasons we remember him and we 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 have to remind ourselves and I ask you as my brother to always keep me on on that path nudge me remind me together. To, like, together together inshallah and we should do that for each other because there's so many of us our friends our our community members who are struggling and it could be your your mental health you could be struggling at work you could be struggling mm-hmm. in your marriage but these are things which we have to find a connection between our day-to-day issues and and problems and connecting that with the story of Abdullah I was saying I believe that for every issue we have in our lives today, there is an answer. If we're talking about miseducation, misinformation, how people are being misguided, because of course this is a huge issue right now mm. in wider society. We look at the companions of Abu Abdullah, that although it's a minority, there are those who remembered the truth and the rightful message of Imam Hussein and stayed close to him. And that, where did that take them? That took them to the salvation, to the mm. ultimate promise, mm. you know, the tranquil soul that we yearn to be. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about in the Holy Quran And of course we know through tafsir That it's referring to Imam al-Hussein But we yearn to be tranquil In, in our dealings And our, you know as much as we would love to Let's be frank And I say this like to all my, my like friends and family They're probably so bored of, of hearing it from me But over 1400 years Not point Not 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 one Or if you're not UK 0.0001% of people Who have ever believed in Shi'ism or the message of Abu Abdullah have ever visited Karbala. Mm. We are such a minute population of people who have had the blessing to go. And of course, we love to go every year. We would love to visit him all the time. Reality is, life isn't like that. We do have peaks and troughs. We fall in and out of love. We remember and we forget about Imam Hussein in our day to day lives. The most important thing for us to do is, like you said, incorporate habits in our life which will bring us back to. The right path. Do you see what mm, I mean? Mm. I think for me at least, like I, I, when I struggle and I struggle a lot, and you know, only Allah knows. But um, when I struggle, and then when I hear His message, or I hear a poem, or I hear something you've recited to say it, or honestly, mm. it, it triggers something in my heart, and it brings you closer. Yeah, yeah, that's that's right. And you know, just by you saying this was Allah. Honestly, all I can think of is Karbala. By the way, so. It's, so I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the opportunity to go to the holy shrines and you know people listening to this podcast be at home wherever you are inshallah Allah gives you the opportunity as well and more importantly I think speaking of ziyara mm. the most beautiful thing for you to have connection with Imam Hussein is go to ziyara mm. honestly it's something else and if you ever have a haja that your first if you've never been ziyara before they say the first time that you go and enter the shrine of Imam Hussein and you stand under his dome and you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through Abu Abdullah, your heart just guaranteed. Mm. Right, it's, it's, it's something everyone has tried and tested. How, if you yeah. don't mind, I know we're dragging on, but I want to ask you, how many times have you been? Okay. On the, average, roughly. Or? The, the first time I was blessed to go to Ziyara was when my father passed away so before my wow. father passed away i've never been there because he's buried in karbala so we had the blessing yeah of uh, his burial taking place in the holy land so we were able to go to the do the ziyara but ever since yani, i've tr- been trying to go every single year and i think i've been there 
during Arba'in about four times. MashaAllah. And outside of Arba'in, I've been to Iraq, um, I think about four or five times as well. Mashallah. So about 10 times, let's say, since the year two, 2008. Inshallah, I'm going this Arba'in. God willing, the flight is booked. Inshallah. That's Inshallah. Imam Hussein asked me to come. Inshallah. Inshallah. Brothers and sisters, as always, it's been a pleasure being here with you. We hope, Inshallah, you have enjoyed this discussion as much as we have. And we pray, of course, before we go any further, that this month is life changing for you, for your family, for all your loved ones. And of course, inshallah, if you have the opportunity, please remember us in your du'a as well. If you want to know more about the story of Imam Hussein, check out Ahlul Bayt TV. There's mm. a wealth of content on there um, about Imam Hussein, Sayyidah Zainab, of course, all of their stories, their legacies as well, and how it applies today. But more importantly, if you want to hear us talk more, I don't know if you would, but <laughs> inshallah, if you do, please subscribe to the channel, leave us your feedback, give us a comment, comment down below. What do you do? which helps you every Muharram stay on the right path. Is there any commitments that you're willing to make this month that we can hear about and we can talk to you about? Please let us know, inshallah. And as always, we will be back next week, inshallah, with a new topic and a better discussion. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.